this is a short video to, uh, to introduce uh, the calculator uh, that we can use to calculate from a piezoelectric uh, disc. Um, where we have a disc here from a piezo disc to uh, material properties like uh, uh, the compliance and um, the uh, piezo charge uh, coefficient. Uh, so I have the calculator on my website. Here is the link. I'll show you how to get there. If you go to my website and then you go to resources, um, that'll there'll be a good way to uh, get there. Um, so this is my website. So you'll, you're gonna arrive at the home part and then you can go to resources and you click on this last part, KP, uh, disk material property calculator, you'll get there. And um, you, can, you can enter your thickness, diameter and density, impedance at one kilohertz, the resonant frequency, anti-resonant frequency and second resonant frequency with regard to the KP mode for, for so for a disk, uh, the second resonant frequency um, will be also KP and as will the first. Um, and then I'll, we'll come with your relative primitivity, planar Poisson's ratio with the aspect ratio corrected. And I'll describe that your S11, S12, KP, K31. And where is D31? Uh, I need to put that in. Why is D31 not put in here? Anyways, I'll do that. <laughs> Fun stuff. Okay. Uh, so, um, well, th the thing I actually want to talk about is this modified F1 to uh, fre resonant frequency one, resonant frequency two, like wh what's happening there. Um, basically, so this uh, disc utilizes, uh, is basically a planar resonance. So, so it uh, utilizes a Poisson, planar Poisson's ratio as well as the S11, that's why we have the S12 involved. Um, and because of that, we also need another resonant mode to analyze because we have two unknowns here, not one. Um, so what happens is that because we need to use the second resonant mode and there's a ratio in their equations, um, we actually have to, uh, um, let's just put this back to normal. How it was before I messed with it? Okay. So this is the second resonant mode of a disc of an eight, uh, uh, aspect ratio um that is and this is the original one here so this is the original one so you see the node at the middle at the center point and you see already there's like some type of wave structure um but if we go to this third resonant mode now we actually have a lot of displacement and this is an issue because of the aspect ratio not being very extremely high because we have two nodes now or nodal ring there needs to be a like if you have an aspect ratio above 50, then you're, you're going to start to get within percentages of the idealized equations upon which those tables that you might find in the literature, like IEEE standard and other places that reference that uh, the solutions for the Bessel equations, um, those will uh, reference a ideally like super, super thin and super, super large. This is an extremely large aspect ratio to achieve this appropriately. So in order uh, so, so the, to calculate the material properties uh, appropriately, if you look at my last webinar, I had a, uh, I had a aspect ratio of 6.5 to one in my experimental sample. And I got a really out of whack Poisson's ratio because that's not nearly sufficient enough. Um, so I did, you know, I did a, oh, let me just get this. I, I did some equations and I mapped out, oh boy, this is not the right one. Uh, oh, okay, let me just pause it real fast here. Actually pause the record. Um, so I mapped out according to, um, it's coming, it's coming. Different uh, aspect ratios and uh, resonant frequency ratios uh, regarding that. And I came up with a correction factor and there's two ranges. There's a below 10 uh, aspect ratio and above 10. And if you'll see this equation, this modified equation, um, I basically added a modification factor, which makes the results uh, work out so much better. Uh, uh, so you can go ahead and test drive this yourself. Um, but you know, if you're using like an aspect ratio of eight or like uh, there, there are, there's serious errors here. So because I've input the material properties into ComSol when doing these calculations, we know the Poisson's ratio 100%. Here it's 0 0.329. Um, and 
uh, but without the Poisson's ratio connect correction, um, and I'll just uh, okay. So I'll just put this uh, insert column, insert copy cells uh, to the right. Okay, right is good. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, left. Okay. Really? Life is short, I guess. Okay, so let's just copy this and paste this. So th this is the aspect ratio. And let me see if I can zoom in if I have any luck there. Okay, the aspect ratio and the final calculated value. The I, the, the, the one that's it's supposed to be 0 0.329. So for my aspect ratio of four, if I use the actual normal IEEE uh, table that assumes extremely thin, uh, large aspect ratio, really thin uh, sample, then we have a, a Poisson ratio of one, which is like ridiculous. And then for the sample that I was using, like uh, experimentally in the last the last webinar, um, it, I got like 0 0.5 or something. So this aspect ratio of eight is 0 0.45 at 20, you know, 20, the, 20 millimeters diameter, one millimeter thickness, uh, we have 0 0.342. So now we're starting to get closer. But really, if you have like an if you have a, a a typical sample that you would really use for your device, you will not be able to measure the Poisson's ratio appropriately, um, and that might stop you from having correct material properties in your simulations, at least from an easy perspective. So therefore, I implement I implemented a frequency ratio adjustment. So for be below ten uh, millimeter aspect ratio and above ten, I I fitted two equations. And um, that's how I got it to be semi-accurate. And then I um, added this. So if the aspect ratio is above 10, then use this first equation. If it's not, then use the second one. Um, and that's why we are I'm able to modify it for your convenience. Um, so you can have good measurements. I'll exit out of that. Um, again, um, in order to access that, uh, you know, you go to my website, resources, and um, you can click on this KP value, and I hope uh, I hope this is worthwhile, interesting, and I'm going to add that D31 calc part on there, uh, so you have it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you um, for tuning in, and I will see you next time.